It was Washington that threw the first punch earlier this year. The main trigger was U.S. President Trump's decision to impose tariffs on Chinese aluminum and steel. We want reciprocal, mirror. If they charge us, we charge them the same thing. Beijing reciprocated in what has become a tit-for-tat trade spat. But the Trump administration's ambitions for what it calls fair trade also targeted its allies, including the EU, Canada and Mexico. These measures had the EU warning of a potential trade war. It could escalate to, 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 to a full uh, trade war, which would be bad for the whole world. We are so interlinked in the global economy. The message was clear the whole world would be affected. But that didn't stop the Trump administration from imposing and threatening more tariffs on its allies and China if they didn't respond to its liking. <laughs> Meanwhile, the EU has had its own drama, Brexit. Negotiations between London and Brussels for an agreement on the terms of Britain's exit from the EU have been unsatisfactory. The Union stands by this agreement and intends to proceed with its ratification. It is not open for renegotiation. The EU's tough stunts and squabbles in Westminster have increased the likelihood that Britain could crash out of the bloc without a deal in March. That would be disastrous for business. The uncertainty on Brexit and the tariff war has weighed on global trade, and it has been catastrophic for the markets. Since January, global equity capitalization has lost about $17 trillion. The Stocks Europe 600, which tracks the continent's leading companies in 17 countries, is now set to post its worst year in a decade. The 2018 dip is set to be the worst year for the index. Only the post-financial crisis plunge in 2008 was worse. The worst performers include travel and leisure, construction, auto and parts, and banks. The auto industry was a big bone of contention between Washington and Brussels. The Trump administration wants lower tariffs for US-made cars in the EU. Uncertainty regarding car imports caused investors to flee auto stocks. Ensuing profit warnings by some car makers did little to change investor sentiment. But there's an even bigger loser on the markets, the banking sector. Apart from the worsening global macroeconomic outlook amid the trade dispute, there was the currency crisis in Turkey and tighter monetary policy in the US. No industry was immune. Tech giants, the world's most highly valued stocks, also took a beating. Initially, it looked like they were the exception. Social media firm Facebook suffered in the aftermath of the Cambridge Analytica scandal, the revelation that millions of its users had their data harvested and used without their knowledge by Cambridge Analytica. The work of Cambridge Analytica is not equivalent to, 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 to traditional marketing. Cambridge Analytica specialized in disinformation, spreading rumors, compromat, and propaganda. The revelations dealt a blow to Facebook's share price, but it recovered in the summer, which saw Apple become the first company to reach a market capitalization high of $1 trillion. Amazon followed a few weeks later. It looked like the sector was immune to the market drought, but that changed. The macroeconomic outlook and the trade spat have also affected tech. Both Amazon and Apple are down from their highs, and Facebook is struggling with another privacy scandal. It has been a rough year for the markets, and while investors may want to put it behind them, the outlook for 2019 is not rosy.